yes, it, it is dangerous to be out there with everybody, but it's dangerous for everybody. But for reporters specifically, it's it seems like something yeah, and, is happening. Yeah. In some cases, it is the police that is firing uh, at folks, and that's what's causing injuries among reporters as well as protesters. In other cases, protesters are ganging up on members of the media at some of these protests. It's happening in, in uh, from both different uh, directions in, in these cases. Look, we all saw the arrest of our CNN crew on Friday morning. That was shocking. Friday night ended with two other arrests in Las Vegas of two other photographers, uh, two photographers there who were then released the next morning. Uh, on Saturday, we continued to see uh, examples of reporters being hit by tear gas, by rubber bullets, etc. In Pittsburgh, uh, there was a photojournalist uh, beaten by members of a, of, a, of a mob and then rescued by other protesters. So there's been a lot of these skirmishes. Some are pointing the finger at the police, saying the police are being way too aggressive, way too violent in these crowds. Uh, in other cases, though, pr protesters or, or rioters are actually being the aggressors and beating up on cars. Uh, beating up on news trucks and vehicles, etc. Look, I think the reason why we're seeing so many incidents against journalists is because we are seeing such widespread disturbance across the country. I spoke with Douglas Brinkley overnight, our CNN historian, who said he has not seen spasms of, of violence and rioting like this as widespread as it is right now since 1968. Because we're talking about big cities like Philly and LA, but we're also talking about smaller cities. Grand Rapids, Michigan had heavy looting overnight scattered looting in Austin, Texas, vandalism in, in cities like Nashville, uh, Tucson, Scottsdale. I mean, the list goes on and on. A lot of this is because protests get out of hand. In other cases, it, it, these are, um, we were hearing from protesters who say they feel they are being provoked, they are being uh, uh, challenged by the police, and that the police are the aggressors. Look, this is going to go back and forth. It's going to go on and on. My fear, Christy and Victor, is that every time we see videos uh, of police being too aggressive, and every time we see videos of, of rioters engaging in property destruction, it's just going to cause more the day after, the day after, the day after. Yeah, we'll see what this leads to today. Um, you know, we've talked about how this is happening while there is um, a, a pandemic going on. Um, have you noticed that this is changing how people are demonstrating protesting? I think it's amazing how these stories have collided in, in some ways in the worst ways. You know, they're also seeing the best of humanity in these moments where people are looking out for each other. And there's a protester in Columbus, Ohio, who put up a bottle of hand sanitizer uh, so folks who were coming out to protest could try to do so safely. Uh, you know, but so there are these moments where you're reminded that we're in the midst of one national emergency, even when people are out protesting against another national emergency. You know, I, I'm certainly seeing that in New York City where, you know, multiple marches every day now of protesters in different places uh, organizing, trying to be socially distant, but in some cases unable to do so. And uh, I think we're going to need to see these two stories collide because it's impossible for them not to. All right. Brian Scalper, always appreciate seeing you, so thank you.